Listeners, welcome back to Filling in the Gaps Rerolled. We hope you had some great gaming since the last time you listened. And if you're new to us, well, welcome to the table or the car, wherever you're listening. We may not be an actual play podcast, but we hope our podcast can help you actually play. We are three DMs who create stories, sessions, one shots, campaigns, what, whatever, based on randomized theme and scenario tables determined by two D twenties. It's just a great way to get creative juices flowing and uh, flex those DM muscles. We hope as you're listening to us, you stop listening and start writing your ideas. All right, well, I'm DM Mambo. I'm going to be your intro captain today, and I'm going to help uh, create this session. Uh, next up, we've got our scenario host who is hi i'm malcolm i'm gonna be running scenarios this go around and our lovely theme host is the following <laughs> i am the following <laughs> i'm david i'll be rolling for themes and uh yeah just like i said uh malcolm and david will be rolling their d20s and we're gonna see what they come up with uh but before we get to there i have a question guys just a quick old question uh what was one of the craziest things a, a PC did to you that you were totally unprepared for, just right out of left field. Uh, I'll start off since I asked. One um, recently that happened to me was, so if you've been listening, you know that I use a plot point variant called a plot shot in my campaign, Bardic Inspiration. And uh, one of my players uh, decided to move this big arc battle we were going to have. I gave him like in-game time a month or so to get ready. They were going to level up a couple. He got the plot shot and was like, uh, yeah, this is going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this big boss battle that I've been prepping for and uh, don't really know the exact details to are going to happen uh, next session now. Great. Awesome. You're totally underleveled. It's going to be fun. So th that's why I love plot points, but I'm also like, uh, sh what am I going to do? <laughs> why did you do this? I would have to say mine, uh, other than sending my terrace to the moon rip. Uh, I've told that story <laughs> before though. So I'm going to go ahead and go with, um, it was the end of the campaign. They were face to face with the villain. And it was the moment where it's the big reveal of like the villains, not the bad guy. He's like, no, hey, I'm trying to do, like, I'm trying to get this city to be at peace. That's all I've really ever wanted. And I see that, like, the only way is, like, I've seen it happen where other people tried other ways. It doesn't work. The only way to get this city at peace is to have everyone give in to control. And after that, it'll be fine. And so I thought, because I had laid things out in a way throughout the series where I was like, no, everything looks better. It just feels creepier that they would be like, oh, ultimately this guy's not a bad... No, they just killed him. They were just like, no. <laughs> They're like, people should have a right to choose. And I was like, the whole point of this <laughs> was to show you this guy wasn't a bad guy. And I'm like, no, he's gotta die. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's what happened. Oh, that peaked really bad on my mic. But, <laughs> but yeah, they, they just murked him. They were like, oh, this defenseless man in the end who like sent out all these people... Who he said he was trying to help. Like, nah, just just kill him. And I was like, ah, okay. So you never, never, like, never prepare for anything ever, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Mine is a little strange. So I had a, um, like, a time, timey wimey uh, campaign where basically a big bad evil guy went back in time to save the world. And the party were basically his minions. And at one point, they're fighting in this forest, and they end up burning the forest down. And I was like, okay, that's fun. It'll change the map. That changes the future. And then when I went back to look at my notes, the bad guy was living in the forest in the past when they burned it down. So they killed him. And now there's this, like, time paradox because the guy who went back to save everything, who was their master, is now dead. And they just fucked the timeline up. And so it was cool. fun to kind of figure out how to either prevent that or... Um, you know, come up with just how to make the campaign still work. <laughs> and so essentially they, they set themselves on a path 
that would just it, it had no choice but to end in the character's death, which let me add in like a afterlife dungeon, which was really fun. But it, it really surprised me, and it was fun <laughs> to see. That sounds really good. I love time travel. I struggle with it, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a whole forest dedicated to time, like the it's like the bo- you know typical border borderline of Feywild and reality. And if you spend a certain amount of time, you have to start rolling on the on the time chart. And every time my my players have gotten in there so far, they've like rolled no change. And I was like, oh, you guys are lucky. One time, two of them just went in, and then the others stayed out. And I was like, okay, you've spent the t- uh, the time here. Roll this die. And they're like, oh, we forgot about this part. And uh, <laughs> luckily they rolled only like only a few hours had gone by. But I was just like, ah, that could have been a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> Rip Van wrinkled. Yeah. But I think think everyone who stayed out was like an elf or something. So not the biggest change, <laughs> but it would have like changed the whole realm of the world at the time. But would, would an elf want to sit there for a hundred years? <laughs> I mean, I don't think they'd sit there. I think we would have to then record a a hundred year gap. You know what they did during that hundred years, because I think they just come back periodically to to see if they're back yet. That's fair. Or go in and try to find them. I guess I don't know how that would work. Hmm, that's a good question. And speaking of good questions, I have one for you, David. Yeah. Shall we roll? Let's do it. Alrighty. All right. This is the part of the episode where we love it. Where our two scenario and theme hosts, David and Malcolm, are gonna roll on that table. The tables. So I rolled a 14. And I rolled a 13. Alright, so that means we've got telenovela by our lovely roller, Malcolm. Ooh. And then we have so many mimics by yours truly, Mambo here. So this is going to be a fun one. Tell a novella with so many mimics. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> if we're going to put this in like a, a steampunk world with TV and such, the TV is definitely a mimic telling us our stories. Okay, so that's an interesting way to take this. I was going to say, tell a novella is just a like amount of drama. That is in something like when it's a telenovela, it's basically, I believe that's a Spanish soap opera, mm-hmm. but it's like yep. really super dramatic, just over dramatic. Mm-hmm. Like it's the, it's where like the meme stares and stuff come from for a lot of the memes and like gifs that are used <laughs> and they are fantastic. Um, I love this idea. I think it's super, um, yeah, I think this could be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm getting like a lot of like a mimic town type thing of. Of like when a when the party enters a, a a shop or something and like maybe they slam the door or something the door just goes ouch why would you do that to me <laughs> okay that's that's a different direction than I was thinking I like that though um, the idea of like everything being the the items themselves all the mimics just being like goodness you do not understand the life of a mimic <laughs> like they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. just over dramatic mimics all over the place nobody ever wants to open up my <laughs> the first thought i had a big like um what's it called like trope for telenovelas <laughs> is the amnesia story so it would, usually mimics are like these terrible monsters but what if you have like an area full of mimics that don't really know they're mimics they just know they're alive and they're going about doing regular stuff and so you get to see these mimics just acting out a normal life. That'd be interesting. As if they were characters in a telenovela. <laughs> now, maybe I'm I know I know I'm the resident horror guy and I'm not trying to bring it there. But could you picture like an over dramatic version of the thing where instead it's trying to figure out who's human and your characters are the humans and the mimics are like, No, there's one of us who's not what they say. <laughs> and they're all trying to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, because mimics are like shapeshifters, so they can take whatever form they want, mm-hmm. and they just don't know what humans are. <laughs> like, well, I know I'm a chair. What what furniture are you? And the humans, <laughs> your players have to lie about, oh, I'm a lamppost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so where are some tropes in Telenova? There's big secrets, of course, that are always uncovered. Um, family betrayal is normally another one. Uh, murder, sometimes. And, I don't know. Big drama is the other one, but we already discussed that. That's like the whole post of it. And the mimics, they're about shape-shifting and eating people? 
I like the idea of a mimic who's trying to tell you a story. We could have that be like, if it's futuristic, that can be the TV that's talking to you and telling you about like the lives of everyone. <laughs> or if it's like more fantasy, it can be just a book mimic. This, yeah, I was thinking a book mimic, like a novel, and it's a <laughs> it's a tell the novel because <laughs> it's telling you. Yeah, I like that. Oh, that can be even be like the hook is your players can just be out in the world and they find a book and the book starts to tell them a story about its home, which is full of all these mimics, and it kind of leads them there. Maybe there's somebody in the town who's full of all the mimics. Um. Maybe there's somebody, again, that idea of, like, somebody that doesn't belong in the Mimic Town and the Mimics don't know how to get rid of them. So it's like the Mimics are hiring your party. So being, like, dramatic like this is very against Mimic nature. So maybe whoever's in the town that's hiding out is causing this behavior and they don't like it. So that's why they're trying to find whoever's hiding out in the town. What kind of uh, thing would it be? I'm thinking, like, a magical object, maybe, that makes them kind of over dramatic or makes it kind of like this kind of like a like an activation spell similar to what we did with the uh singing episode but not by a great god patron just by some dude who's like all right like almost like a zone of truth but this is like their version of zone of truth it's telenovela <laughs> so i'm trying to think of items and the first item to pop into my mind that would be like slightly different or focused on in a different way what if a lich made their phylactery out of a mimic. And so the thing that is causing all this drama in the town is a phylactery mimic that's just kind of bored because its lich is far away. And it has this like connection to a person, so that changed the original lich's kind of personality. And so it was bored of all these other regular mimics, so it was like, I'm going to make that change. I, I like that a lot, David. And it gave me the idea of, what if the lich... It put different personalities into their phylacteries. So, like, it, they wanted to stay like that, you know, that, that dark, evil lich one. And he's like, oh, but I have such a fabulous side on me, too. And he has that dramatic side, or they have that dramatic side. So, they, they took their, their dramatic side and put it into this phylactery, <laughs> this mimic. But then they also... So then they put, but they also put like their humor side somewhere else. And that's where you get like the laugh track coming in too. <laughs> so like, these just, they, they, this lich has put all their different, uh, quote unquote, bad personality traits into these mimics. And they've kept the ones that they've wanted to in their body. But so like, so like, that's when you have like this over dramatic uh, chest or like an over dramatic table or door or whatever. And so like, you have this town of mimics. The very much, you know, Beauty and the Beast-esque. They all have their different personalities, but it's all from this one lich. And so, like, when, <laughs> so, like, if your party has, like, come across this lich before and they've killed it, it reverts and it gets one of the personalities back. And now it's like, why is this lich all of a sudden singing and dancing and doing all these different things? So that, I think that's a way to pull in that. The lich is like, stop doing this to me. <laughs> <laughs> They could even have the lich be, like, really far away. Now, personally, I have been watching uh, a lot of that great TV show that I like a bunch, which will probably be over by the time this comes out, or most definitely, uh, WandaVision. And what they've done is kind of hop through different genres. And what I was thinking when you originally were talking about the idea of, like, a laugh track and different things, uh, Mambo, is having it be that it's more of a like you could even do different areas kind of based off different like personality traits so you could have like a whole place dedicated to comedy and a whole place dedicated to drama and not even have them all be in the same spot i think in the same spot works better for our our scenario there but um you could have this be, if you if you were to make this one a campaign you could have it just be different lands and you're like it's the thing of like you're constantly fighting the same guy because it can, like, shapeshift into the lich form and be like, ah, I am a lich, but I tell jokes. And it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, I'm a lich and I'm over dramatic. Ah, I'm a lich and I'm very afraid of you. Go away. Like, it's all the different, like, emotions and things. And you can play off that and make different genres of different things. If you want to do, like, a TV guide um, D&D, which might be fun. I love that a lot. Yeah, I love that, too. A TV guide that you could print it out to give it to your like your your players possibly and they can like go through the sheet of what's available and what's like what's on currently <laughs> maybe the whole world is like a mimic world what well, is now 
Yeah. This witch just keep, keeps ripping out his emotions and putting them in mimics, and then he's like, no one's going to catch these mimics, and the mimics are like, guess I'll go take over the world now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Something else that's fun. So, telenovelas always have, like, love triangles, and it would be fun mm. if you just have this list of furniture that are your mimics, and just put them in an, in an order. So, like, the toaster loves the bathtub, who loves the toilet, who loves the fridge, just going down this line. And so that's part of the interpersonal connections between all of them. Yeah, you have to, your players, like, you have to make the household happy or something like that. So they're trying to place it all, <laughs> place all these things next to the ones that they love. And then they get to the bathtub who's like, I love the fridge. And you're like, what? <laughs> I, I, we cannot move you. Maybe it's like a clawfoot tub or something. It's like, I, we are not moving you next to the fridge. Or, no, please, I want the toaster. I'm like, nope, that could kill somebody. <laughs> that could kill. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is great. It reminds me of that, uh, ah, gosh, uh, Song Wong, uh, who's a voice actor I like, did a thing called Cherim Anime, and it was basically that idea of like, what if these objects were alive and all wanted to be together? And it's an anime about these items who are all like, hey, love me. And then uh, all I know is a refrigerator kills somebody, but people still love that character. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it my uh the brave little toaster but D D? <laughs> uh, it, it pretty much it was it was an anime but not really it was a guy's concept for an anime that he made as a joke but then people really liked it so he kept making more videos nice it's it's pretty good um but yeah i think that'd be like a fun thing to do and then if we uh what else is a big thing in telenovelas um oh we gotta have a twin who comes back oh that's the other twins book. there's two books yes oh and then you have a part where one book goes like he's only telling you half of this story <laughs> he's leaving out the truth and then <laughs> and then he pops it yeah it's gotta be a book with a mustache shoot no reason just has mustache <laughs> on the front yeah yeah of course beautiful so is the lich are we gonna bring the lich back into town at all i don't we don't need to think so i, I picture this is like a lower level party yeah so the lich can be something they deal with in the future. Mm. That's true. That's true. I didn't know if we wanted to name the lich and give characters. Think like think like Tom Riddle, good old Valdi. Um, you go. You don't fight him immediately. You fight all his stuff first, and then you get up to him. You know. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. I just I don't know if we want to give if do we want to give make characters. You know, to help give the give those DMs out there who need the little extra. I mean, yeah, sure. Less, well, less the prep for him. So the, the Lich has got to have two names. There's got to be like the normal name that he had. Or no, there's got to be like the dark name that he has now. Something like um, Eurythus the Destroyer. And he needs a name from his past where he cut all the personality out. And it's got to be this long telenovela name. If I knew how to do the one line from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody where Estevan says his full name, I would do that here. <laughs> but I could not, and I'm not going to butcher it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that would be kind of fun. My my whole thing was thinking the opposite, actually. Have the dark name, have this like really long, dangerous sounding name, and be like, oh, Jacob, stop it. And it's just this just goofy Jacob. Hello. <laughs> we could put a pin in the name for now. I like, um, but I like the idea. I found Esteban's real name. If we want to m- mimic Esteban for <laughs> for this lich, <laughs> you can try to say it's long. <laughs> it's Esteban Julio Ricardo Montoya de la Rosa uh, Ramirez. Obviously, not as fast as he says it. I like that. We can have a villain name of Esteban, and then you just add the destroyer at the end of it. No, what you do is you take each name, and that's a different t- So each time he separates out the phylactery, it drops a name, and that's what one of the mimics is now called. So if, so if you make a chest, he cuts out his last name first, so it's Ramirez is the chest name. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe this is in like the middle of a campaign, or like right before, like they just start getting inklings. You're just, you've been threading this, this plot of, or you, you're just starting starting to thread a plot in for your characters in for your players and you start dropping like they heard over at a tavern or heard while they're venturing about this all-powerful lich that's disappeared recently um no one knows where he went but murders have stopped so and so and you just find out the name is ramirez as an example 
then they go and then all of a sudden they they find a talking book and that's the book's name it's like i was the first one created the ramirez is me he's like you're you're a book you can't be a lich oh no come to my town and you'll see everything um and that's when you start getting the different love triangles of of like ricardo loves montoya but montoya loves julio and you keep going bouncing back and forth and you're driving your players nuts with these different like weird threads of of all these love triangles and you're just trying to do all this all this stuff like over the top because that's what like you know telenovelas are they're always over the top yeah um and i think that's when you finally like if your players start destroying them all taking the steps that's when like the the personalities come back together and that's when you get the full lich i I love that but you're gonna have like a lich whose name is like 50 names and that's yeah. exciting because then the full name also tells you the line of which the love triangle goes. So like the first name loves the second name, loves the third name, on and on till the last name who loves the first name. Yes, and I you, love that. In order to like defeat the lich, you need to say his name like Rumpelstiltskin in order. <laughs> so you have to go to each of these objects, find out which ones they love in order to get the the correct um, placement of each name. In his name. I love that. So yeah, you have to one figure out all the possibility names that that he that he that this lich has, and then you have to say it in order, and that's how you're able to like finally like kill him. Um, also, now I think the lich needs to be a gnome because gnomes just typically have super long names in most games. I'm okay with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would think that the uh, having the also it's important to acknowledge the other way cuz i'm viewing it as as these names get cut out that's why they love the last the whatever the next last name is mm-hmm. is because they're like no my love i'm separated from you but what if that other one who got separated from them is like no i hate that last person <laughs> so that's what you have to solve is that like whoever got separated out is like oh no that guy we don't talk to him anymore he got left behind ramirez we don't care about him anymore um and so it's like, no, but he loves you. Wow. And it's like, the passion is there, but can you turn it around? <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Oh, and then you can make, so like the first and last names, the one that is forgotten first, nobody loves it. So it's the one that kind of wants to throw this all out. And maybe that's the book that's true. The first book that's trying to get you to come in here and stop the lich because it's jealous. And then the last name, it basically only feels love and it's the last one. So no one hates it. And so it's the other book that tells you the rest of the story. Yeah, I have to find that and be like, I'm separated for all my loves. And the the other one's like, nah, burn it all down. (laughs) I hate them. They hate me. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great. I think, (laughs) what? Keep the name. No. And then you have like that one name that that it loves. It's like, no, wait, I do love you. (laughs) Or you have like the twin brother book who's trying to take over and be like the boss phylactery. Well, I think that's the book ends or the twins. It's the, the begin, the end or the last name to be separated is the one who feels like I love everybody. What happened? And the one who was first separated is like, I'm bitter. I want revenge. I am the evil book. What if it's the same book, the front and the back? So the, so that's how you get to the whole story is as you finish defeating these, these mimics, a new page is added on and then you have to go find the back end of the book, but they like, you know, they repulse each other. So they have to, you have to men bind them back together. That's when the lich comes back out of the, of the, of the book, maybe kind of like, uh, not like Toon World, but uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh, but sort of like, you know, emerges from the book. Right. Like a summoning type spell almost. Yeah. Now you have like a, a, a huge battle with, with like this all powerful lich who has all of its range of emotions now. And then he appears and he says, hello, <laughs> I am Esteban. And then does the yes, whole name. <laughs> does the whole name. And that's when you cut off your, your session for to that night. <laughs> Leave them baffled. And something else that's really fun, if your party goes in and they're friendly with all these mimics and learn all their names and backstories, when they say the full name and break it, break the curse and summon the lich, now all of these mimics who were once like amnesiac and friendly go back to being regular mimics and you have a big dungeon that they need to fight their way out of. Oh, yeah. I love. Yeah. Yeah. Because like now the now like so maybe they started in like a dungeon esque or like they've worked their way through this town. And now the gates are closed at the exit and they have to fight their way back this time. <laughs> so the front half is all this, you know, talking, all the all the 
persuasion, uh, deception checks, intimidation checks to get all this information. And now it's a fight out and they just get increasingly more difficult. And then the lich is the last one. And you're just like, well, damn. <laughs> and a murder most foul. <laughs> yeah, this will be it's a lot of fun. This is great. I love this. Yeah. So I think if you, uh, as a DM, if you want to run this, I would roll a a percentile die it doesn't have to be like uh the 100 percent or it could just be your your 2d 2d 10s and or a d10 and d8 or something just to see how many mimics you want you're gonna have and then that way you can start naming them and piecing the name together mm-hmm. do we give the mimics any residual power from the lich yeah i would think so yeah that makes sense I- especially since after because if if you're if you're, they're being corrupted, well, corrupted, if they're being infused with this personality, I think it's going to take a life of its own when that leaves as well. So they no longer communicate with you like a normal person would, but now maybe they have tendencies to attack that way. So if, say, like a, a chest gets filled with his, with this lich's emotion of love, then all of a sudden, it instead of biting, uh, the the chest makes it looks makes itself look really cute or something like that, and tries to to kiss and then bite you know the the player's head off. You know, now that you've said this though, and now that we discussed the fact that mimics are shapeshifters, guys, they could just look humanoid and just walk around <laughs> after after this, like after they're discovered, after you like after you do the good job befriending them, or you just kill them. And just kill him and the witch gets some of his power back. And that can be like a thing of that, like a little undertale where it's like, oh, mercy or not. <laughs> and then if you choose not, it's going to have a bigger fight at the end. Um, yeah, yeah, but I if think you- that's great. Um, I also was playing with the idea of like maybe the lich has, has trapped uh, people that it's cared about into like different objects. So they've created these mimics through people that have like are, you know, aren't the emotion necessarily, but are bringing up that emotion. So if this lynch is trying to cut itself off from the world to become this evil, powerful person, maybe all these people have some sort of relationship to the lich. So they've it, they've taken on the name that the lich has given that box. Or I kind of like that too. The idea of like, so like oh, it's, it's mom and dad are like a fork and knife in there, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we know Esteban. He's so cute. Blah blah blah. He would he he must be going through something. It's just a phase. Um, and then that's how and then its whole the lich's whole name, of course, is all of the names put together. So I really like that idea of like just this long name going, and then like you know you have its his first high school crush that broke his heart. They're in there too, and like just to, like oh, I used to be in the in the in a venturing party with them. Uh, one day we disagreed on something, and all of a sudden I found myself here. Maybe it takes on the like the spirit of those things, so it's like it takes on what that would be like for. And I think we're saying the same thing, and I might just be misunderstanding you, but of like for love, it's like oh, it looks like the crush, but it is. His feeling of love about this person. Yeah, right? I think either one would work very okay. well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really good. So the, the lich is basically every single thing that it perceives as either like weak or distracting in its head is what it's chopping out to make these, so that it can like fulfill its goal of revenge or what? It, probably revenge. Revenge sounds world domination. Please, I just want to take over the world. Sasha, you broke my heart. I want to take over the world. <laughs> You're too distracting. This is just a lesson in toxicity. Is yeah. what this whole episode. Is. But yeah, you have this guy who's just ripping out the different pieces of himself until there's like nothing left but a soulless machine. Maybe that can be the thing too. Is that like kingdoms and stuff are like afraid of this glitch in particular because he's surprisingly ruthless because he's managed to do the philactrophy spell multiple times and has only become more like only gained more precision and more like danger um oh i like that a lot yeah i think even if it's i i, I love that like it, so like this king kingdom knows where the town is so they hire you to go do this they give you the book that's against him already who's like giving the details but the the lich isn't dumb and he also starts giving um parts of his his intelligence to these creatures so maybe like the walls are mimics like the whole like the whole village of mimics is borderline in walls that are that know how to think for themselves and they can you know shoot out spikes shoot out like cannon fire and such like that 
that way it's like hard to get in mm-hmm. but once you're in it's you're not fooled with these mimics trying to eat you you're dealing with love triangles or you're dealing with like the over dramatics of telenovela yeah i think that again i think that could be more so when they uh discover like oh we're on the same side and it's like i don't want to work with him he left me when this ha- when i was alone and i was trapped within the well of my sadness nobody was there for me especially not you raimundo and it's like <laughs> oh look look what happened here so i just had an idea of like your party going to like kill one of the mimics and all of a sudden another mimic steps in front of it saying no please <laughs> don't kill him your axe like, swings what? down the chair jumps in the way <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the door unhinges itself, throws itself in front of the axe. The axe freezes. It turns out it was a mimic, too. <laughs> I could never hurt you, my love. There's got to be, like, items in the dungeon that your players pick up and like, oh, yeah, this is a plus three axe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The torches on the wall are, like, all saying, like, <laughs> you pick up a torch from the wall. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> strong grip you have there. <laughs> Perfect. I love this. So what else? What other kind of things can we throw in here? Hmm. Well, that's what I was asking if we give it any of the spells that a lich has, because then we can have some summoning, maybe? Or I really like the idea of embodiment of whatever emotion they are. So, like, for the loved one, maybe it's like having a thing of, like, charm person on a bunch of people, so it's throwing all those at you. For, like, the uh, sadness, maybe it's just like, oh... Uh, it's invisible. Good luck trying to find it. And so it's like all like different types of tasks for different emotions that are separated out from this lich that are in these items. So it's additional difficulty to just dealing with the items and recruiting them is now you have to deal with the fact that that they have their own way of interacting with the world because the lich had his own way of interacting with the world. Mm. And in the end, you take them all to therapy and it's all better. Yeah, I mean, that can be one of the, like, end plot lines is you're able to reconcile all of the different things that this lich has cut out of himself back into him and maybe make him a good person. Or you accidentally teach him how to use every aspect of his personality to achieve his goals and you make him a better villain. Yeah, I like that because I was just thinking maybe maybe the queen sends you on this mission because this lich is like her secret lover because I think that's a big that's so like she's like you need to teach him how to be a human and then and then like I I don't know I don't want him to die but the king found out and now he's he's venged or he's he's declared uh, vengeance against the king and he's going to kill my husband but I love them both and I don't know who to choose help me and the king is his father who had like a torrid affair and that's what brought about the lich in the first place. Wait, we we have the lich sleeping with his mom here at that case, David. No, 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 with his stepmom. Okay. <laughs> this this is this is still <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. But the stepmom has a twin sister who's the real stepmom. But the king. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well at this point. Ooh, so mm. the king has an affair, um, and to keep it secret from the queen, he orders to have that person killed and they go through and they kill the mother but the child survives the child grows up to become this lich who wants revenge on his father but accidentally finds the queen who he falls in love with yeah not knowing it's the queen but the queen knows it's the lich who is yeah yeah this is this is good this is good telenovela (laughs) stuff yeah so we have all that uh all those royal hijinks and shenanigans um (laughs) We, we, uh, we can even have the part. And again, I like having the party have a choice so they can be like, yo, hey, I'm going to just go kill the king. This solves the problems. Uh, team up with the lich to murder the king. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Um, again, if you, we've had them team up with the lich before. Remember the night happened, night of the lich and death. What's the thing? That's true. Oh yeah, we have. But we could, uh. Oh, this can even be a tie into that. I was thinking this could be the lover of that lich, or lich is in love. <laughs> it, no, no. So he he's not fully able to reconcile all of his emotions, and so the queen retires, or you know, is without a kingdom now that the king is dead, and she starts the home for sleep that we have from Night of the Liching Dead, 
and he's the first patient. She puts him to sleep in this dream world. Actually, that's Bippity Boppity Snooze. Night of the Witching Dead's the one where he, uh, oh, yeah, we, yeah. You're right. <laughs> We're connecting a lot, though. Sure, why not? <laughs> Going in the gaps, connected universe. <laughs> and then there's a Rakasha who pops up. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I, this, this is, I like this. I like this a lot. I love, I love this. I love overdramatic Lich Man. I love Esteban. <laughs> Thank you, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Of course, Without it, we never so would have gotten that far. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, of course, uh, DMs, feel free to change any of these names, of course, and whatnot. And uh, please let us know on Twitter whatever you come up with, because we love we love hearing that. Uh, but yeah, I think this is great. Um, are there is there any certain encounters we want to flush out? Is there anything else we want to give our listeners to like chew on, to flex on? We give, let's throw in some other emotions. This dungeon would basically have been built or kind of fortified so that the Lich would be protecting his phylactery or phylacteries. So there could be other like monsters or entities inside that your players have to deal with that aren't mimics. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Maybe some fake ones too, possibly, that look like mimics but like aren't. Um, uh, I think that would be great. I, th- I love your idea of like the plus three axe in there. But maybe it maybe it's pretending to be a mimic because it doesn't want to be in battle anymore. So this could just be another bone. So it's like a sentient plus three axe who's pretending to be an evil mimic just so no one picks it up anymore because it's like I'm too old for this. Yeah. What if what if you just what if the uh, lich is just like I enchant these words upon it so anytime it's picked up it's like oh you found me no don't destroy me i'm just an innocent mimic and that's all i can say (laughs) yeah i like that a lot i think i think this one's really interesting um there's there's a few ways to go about it too which i appreciate i always like when we have a few different things you can do also if you're like yo i want a longer name than than esteban's because i just i want to do this for like ever uh, check out Picasso's name. It's long. <laughs> it's very long. You can tie in the use of uh, the the magic paints and such as well, too. Yes, but yeah, I, I I enjoy this one. I think this is really cool. Encounters again. We're leaving a lot of that up to you guys. It's like filling any other dungeon. And again, if you want, it doesn't have to be just one dungeon. Uh, this guy's smart enough to separate himself out several times. Pretty sure he could hide him like throughout the kingdom, and that could be like a fun campaign. Is just hunt down these witches' pieces. Yeah, I think I think definitely if you're going, if if we, I so I, I think we're gonna stick on the on the route of him wanting to kill his father, the king. Or yes. Um, so I think for sure you have different royal knights or different people of the king's court in here as as like skeleton servants or some sort of ghoul or ghast that are under the control of the of the of this lich uh because i think he i I personally see him as taking out the lower ranks weakening the king making him stress making him feel all the emotions that he finds to be unrelevant but making the king suffer through them so Mm. maybe he's doing that and then he's slowly charming well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he even knows it's the queen, and he's charming the queen on purpose to make her fall in love with him. So the king feels the 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 loss of love that he's lost since his his uh, um, mother was killed. I like the direction you're going. I just want to change it just a little bit. Liches usually focus on like necromancy magic and bringing back the dead. I think the way that this dungeon's been set up, where we're focusing on kind of mimics and the items. Um, is it transmutation that kind of has like animate object? So a lot of the monsters in here could be objects and they could be things that he's stolen from the king in his like excursions into the castle that are like important mm. to the king. But now he's turned them against him as like weapons. Okay. Um, I like that. So I just had a thought from that. What if his mom's casket is like the <laughs> final boss before him? <laughs> well, that's morbid, but I love it. <laughs> You know, like, what if he's like, I couldn't bring you back fully, mom, but I took some of your soul uh, that was lingering, lingering around that hasn't passed on yet, and I put it into the coffin or something. That's really good. I like that. Oh, and that that's how he wants to kill the king, is he wants to seal him in this coffin with his mother and then bury it. 
Oh, what if he's doing his mom's bidding from the grave? So <laughs> what if the emotion he could only get ga- grasp was like regret from her or or her longing to just be with the king by by um by herself? So he's slowly being like morphed into this into this lich of like if I cut out all my emotions and and just give my mom what she wants, then maybe I can like slowly get what I want or like this will make my mom happy. I don't need anything else. I don't need any other emotions except for my mom's happiness. And then you can build a side like conflict between the queen, who is the lich's lover, and the dead mother. <laughs> Oh, the the queen, the queen is is the mom's twin sister. So the king has been the, so the the real queen is the lich's mom, but her step her twin identical sister took her place as the queen and convinced the king that the real queen was the stepsister or was the, the twin sister all along. I would like to offer a small rewrite um for the cases of simplification. Uh, having it be that the okay, so it would go more along the lines of this king. Uh, the king has an affair with a person. That person is our lich. The king then remarries to this stepmother that this guy would have. The mom of the lich dies. The lich swears vengeance on the king who did not take care of her because she could have her die of like some illness of poverty or whatever. And um, so he's like, I will avenge you, mom. And mom could be like, I regret. And he can misunderstand the last lines of I regret to be like, I regret that I didn't kill him myself. And so she's like, I'm, he's like, I'm going to kill him. And so you have all that going. And so you could, you could, it would be more reasonable to have a thing of potential turnabout then if you do convince him to like go, hey, maybe she regrets whatever. Like maybe she regrets that she like, had you raised to feel this anger inside of you, you don't know. And, or maybe it's just straight up, I'd murder. But anyway, uh, then also it's because I, I'm not about the half, the half blood thing that we got going here. Uh, cause then it's also, it's just this guy's coming in and swooping on his dad's girl versus it being this guy's coming in and swooping on his half mom. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I was rewriting that stuff, so like I would get rid of the romance. No, that's part that's that's it's... why I was just like I wanted to kind of just grab everything and simplify a little bit because it was much like an actual telenovela. Those get kind of out of hand at a point, and you're like, wait, who's related to who? Doing what? Doing where? And so yeah, I think as a DM running this, you'd have to be very clear about the connections. Your your players, of course, let them get lost and let them try to read pieces together. But for you, I would keep a clear note of. This who like this person likes this person. This mimic likes this mimic type thing. Yeah. Keep that as very clear as possible for you. Uh, is there anything else we think we should add on here? I think this one's pretty good. What about you, David? Yeah, I think it's good. I agree. All right. Shall we move on to the recap and synopsis? Yes. I'm getting my synopsis ready. All right. Uh, for this week, I am on the recap and the following is on the scenario. Thanks, dude. I'm glad you caught it. (laughs) Uh, All right. uh, Let me think. Recap. Um, Yeah. So your players find a book or an object that starts talking to them. Um, Maybe they're they're doing a different dungeon crawl, or maybe they're in the, the city you have them in, and the queen has given them this book to take care of a task. It starts talking to them. It starts asking them to listen to its story. Uh, this book leads it to a uh, a village, which is either inside of a dungeon or some obscure location of a village that is full of of animated uh, objects. So you know your typical chests, houses, walls, whatever you feel necessary. They're all talking, and as you're getting in there, you start to realize that these are all different types of emotions, and they're all fighting with each other. And your task now is to put them all in the right places and get them realigned. As you're going on, you start to find out more and more about this place, and you realize that it belongs to some sort of lich, and you realize eventually that you have to start putting these names together in order for this, in order for you to recognize or know the lich's full name. And at the end, you realize once you say the name, you are then able to deal permanent damage to this lich. You realize that one of these are all mimics, and as soon as you fix one mimic, it starts to turn into a real mimic, where you now have to fight it. Um, and you're going through, and you're finding through this dungeon or this village different monsters and and objects that are fighting you that 
want to kill you because that's what they're tasked to do is phylacteries. Uh, and then eventually you realize that the the lich is trying to avenge its mother who was killed by the king who hired you and that the queen is actually in love with the lich who doesn't know is the lich and doesn't know that the queen is actually the married to the man who he hates. So that's what we got for you today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is fun. <laughs> okay. So for the synopsis, your party is exhausted. It's been hours inside this dungeon talking to items. You've finally come up with the 23-word combination. They're finally in the right order. Everyone is with who they love, or who they say they love, or who they really love, but haven't said they love, or who they really, really love, but won't admit it. You're there. Written down on the piece of paper with many scribble marks, holes in it. You finally have the combination. You hold it up. Pablo, Diego, Jose, Francisco, Tapala, Jan, Nepos, Museno, Maria, De Los Remedios, Cipriano, De La Santisma, Trinidad, Martyr, Patricio Clito, Luis y Picasso. You read all of the words, and a light shines in the center of the final chamber, and appearing from it is this long, bony man who just looks towards you. Who has summoned me? And behind you, you hear chaos as the 23 objects that were uh, frantically kind of being friendly and loving on each other have lost all sentient, or all semblance of the personality they had, and 23 mimics stand at your back, and a lich stands at your front. What do you do? I didn't realize how, like, bad a situation we put them in until you said that part at the end. <laughs> it's like, oh, they have to fight all these mimics and a lich. Good luck. Dimension door. <laughs> Pocket sand. Um, that was, that was really good, David. Thank you. Well, with that, <clears throat> thank you guys for listening to Filling in the Gaps. I'm, uh, I've been one of your hosts, uh, Malcolm. Oh, I have been the following, David. <laughs> And I am uh, Dia Mambo here. Thanks again. I did the intros this uh, this uh, episode and the recap. And you can follow me at Dia Mambo Five on the Twitter and at Bardic Inspiration, uh, which is the podcast I run. Is that is at Bip D and D. Those are my tags. You can follow us at Fit G D and D. Uh, that's F I T G D and D. Um, send us in some themes and scenario suggestions. We always love to see them, and it helps keep our show going. Also, leave us a five star review anywhere, but especially on iTunes, because their algorithm is a bit hard to crack. So help us keep climbing those charts, and we'll happily be there. Um, thanks for sitting down with us and having a good time at the table. Till next time. Yep. Feel free to join our uh discord where we're always talking we're always throwing ideas if you need help we're always here to help with your uh campaigns doesn't have to be D. &D. uh just need an idea to shoot off if we got a lot of homebrew going in there which is great and uh use that hashtag fit G D &D so we can uh start trending and help y'all out thanks for listening Obtuse audio.